Good evening. My name is Stuart George. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of South Atlantic Media Services Limited. At 12 p.m. midday on the 10th of March 2017, the South Atlantic Media Services Limited Board of Directors announced to staff that the company will cease trading as soon as the 31st of March 2017. This is a direct consequence of the SHG Media Review. The proposals, which we have been told cannot be negotiated, mean that SAMS simply cannot run the business to the same standard of professionalism. In 21 days, the three radio stations, Radio 1, Radio 3 Pure Gold and the BBC World Service will all stop. Also, the final edition of The Sentinel will be published on Thursday the 30th of March. The News Byte TV show will also air its final episode on Tuesday the 4th of April 2017. Thank you very much for watching. Good evening and welcome to Newsbite. I'm Donna Crowey and making the headlines this week. Tony Leo and Linda Glanville crowned not so strictly champions. We get an update on the wind turbines at Deadwood Plain. Class afloat visits St. Helena for a three day stay. And we have all the latest sporting action. The May Not So Strictly Dance Competition held on Saturday by Grapevine Dance Studios went off with a bang, with Tony Leo and Linda Glanville taking home the title of the Not So Strictly Champions. SAMS reporter Hannah Durnford went along to the night. After a warm-up the weekend before at Plantation House, the eight Not So Strictly couple showed off their amazing dance moves to an audience of over 250 at Prince Andrew School on Saturday night. To begin with, all eight couples had to dance the Boston, and they then received comments back from the judges. So I think that you've improved in confidence, you've improved in showmanship, and also the dance, although not technically savvy, um, I couldn't see any flaws whatsoever. So congratulations and well done. Judges Nicola Essex and Angelo Boboto then performed an interpretive dance, along with compeers for the evening, Damien Obey and Luke Bennett, who showed off their own dance moves. Afterwards, all eight couples performed a dance of their choice, which included the cha-cha, foxtrot and salsa.
This week, the judges had to score the couples on their performance out of 10, with the two couples with the highest score going into the finals. Tony Leo and Linda Glanville and Her Excellency Governor Lisa Phillips and JJ Dunqua Martineau were the couples with the highest scores and had a tie of 77 points. They moved into the final round where they once again danced their routines, this time for the audience to vote for the best couple and also the not-so-strictly champions. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the 2017 Not So Trophy Dance Competition, Tony and Linda! After the 230 votes were counted, Tony Liu and Linda Glenville were crowned Not So Strictly Champions with a winning vote of 198. I spoke to Tony and Linda at the end of the night about how they felt being crowned the champions. So, Tony and Linda, you have just found out that you have won the Not So Strictly competition. Yes. How do you both feel? I don't know about Linda, but I know I'm, I'm thunderstruck because it came as a surprise. I had some mistakes. We both had mistakes, didn't we, Linda? Yeah, we Along did. the way. And when you try to correct a mistake on the floor, it don't work out so well. And the judges are looking at your feet, so that's what happened. So I wasn't looking to get where we were or where we got tonight. Um, quite overwhelming, actually. And um, even more so for the donations that uh, people gave us towards cancer awareness. In fact, that was the um, factor behind me actually taking part. Um, and for me, it, it's a really um, close subject. But I really would like to just thank everybody for the kind donations and for making us winners. I'm yes. not sure we really deserve it, but um, it's for a good cause. And yes. you know, there's never enough for cancer awareness. And um, I just want to thank well, everybody. Well, it's all for fun as well. So we thoroughly enjoyed what we did it's for a good cause. Brilliant. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, no, thank you to people. Nicola. Thank you to everybody who organised. And thank you for everybody who came and supported us. And as I said, thank you to everybody who donated towards our um, charity fund. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It has now been three years since six additional wind turbines were added at Deadwood Plain. Before additional wind turbines were added, six turbines generated 10% of electricity used by the island. After the additional turbines were added, the electricity generated by them doubled. However, since the additional wind turbines were added three years ago, Kanak has focused more on solar energy than wind energy, as it was matching the demand profile better. The turbines are still continuing to be maintained by Kanak staff to prevent them from failing. When we had the six wind turbines, we got um, approximately 10% electricity that was generated by those six wind turbines. Obviously, if you, you double them to 12, which we did three years ago, that 10% um, is now up at, um, at 19%, so it's just about doubled um, the output, as you'd expect when mm. you double the number of turbines. There are no plans to get rid of wind turbines and convert fully to solar energy, as the wind turbines play a huge part in renewable energy on St Helena. However, Kanak are now looking more into solar energy. There's, there's always challenges. Any um, electromechanical system is always going to go wrong. You know, if you buy a new car, mm. you know, you know, one day it's going to go wrong, even if you service it uh, meticulously. Um, so. 
yeah, so they, you know, things things wear out, bearings sort of start, you know, uh, of use, they start wearing out, seals leak, flat shaft bearings that hold the blades on need, need replacing after a period of time, so... Um, yes, yeah, so there's, there's always always plenty to do, mm. and they do they do get a bit of a hammering because there's an awful lot of lot of wind. But it's you know although they're challenges, they're challenges that one would normally reasonably expect. The class of float visited the island for a three day stay earlier this week. SAMS reporter Hannah Durnford found out more. The class of float arrived to St Helena on a misty Tuesday morning from Cape Town. The ship is part of the Class Afloat program where students have the opportunity to learn maritime skills, such as sailing the ship under the guidance of the captain and crew. The ship sails to many ports over the course of the voyage, including Barcelona, Brazil and Barbados. The ship provides secondary and university education and also an opportunity for gap year students to join the program. The ship was anchored at St Helena until Friday, where it then set sail for Ascension Island. Here now is your latest sporting updates. Half Tree Hollow became T20 district champions with a convincing seven-wicket victory over Levelwood on Sunday afternoon. Both finalists had booked their places in the final with victories on Saturday. Levelwood brushed aside the challenge of Rast 1 on Saturday morning and Half Tree Hollow defeated Longwood on Saturday afternoon. In the morning match, Level Wood were rampant and bowled Ras 1 for 90. Sanjay Klingham produced a good performance with the ball and picked up three wickets for 10 runs. Brandon Liu took three for 17. For Ras 1, Darren Duncan struck 34 and Nick Aldrich 26 to provide the bulk of the runs. Delroy Liu and Russ Henry chased down the score in 7.2 overs. Henry struck 64 and Liu 19. Halftree Hallu were convincing in their victory over Longwood on Saturday afternoon. Darrell Leo struck 50 to help Longwood post 130, while half tree Hallow captain Andrew Yun returned two wickets for 23 runs. Nick Stevens struck 32 and Philip Stroud an unbeaten 50 during the run chase to help half tree Hallow book a berth in the final. In Sunday's final, half tree Hallow restricted level wood to just 115. Andrew Weiss started with the ball, taking four wickets for 27 runs, while Russ Henry continued on his good run of form and struck 31 for level wood. Levelwood took early wickets during the run chase, but Nick Stevens and Chris Owen combined to devastating effect to take half tree Hallow to the district crown. Stevens struck 33 and Chris Owen a brutal 70. Congratulations, half tree Hallow. Well, that's it for this week's News Bite. Do tune in again next week and remember, you can catch up on all the latest news from the island by tuning in to SAMS Radio 1 and you can read about it in The Sentinel, which is out every Thursday. I'm Donna Crowey and thank you all for watching.